Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Starseed Chats. I am Lily Nova, and we have James Gilliland here with us from ESETI Ranch. Special welcome to James. If you haven't heard of ESETI Ranch, you should know about it because it's a pretty magical place. <laughs> they, uh, they have tons of UFOs there. Um, James has been in the game for a very long time. He's an author, a speaker and has amazing contact experiences, UFO experiences, footage, and all of that. So I'm excited to be chatting with you today. Welcome, James. How are you? Oh, great. Thanks for having me on the show. Awesome. Yeah, it's funny. Whenever I first started, whenever these UFOs first started popping up, yeah, people actually recommended. I had a couple people recommend looking into you. This is like two years ago before I knew anything. So it's just... Yeah. Uh, it, it took me a while. And then like, whenever I came across your stuff, I was like, this looks like my home. <laughs> yeah. <He's steady> ranch. <laughs> yeah. People come and they say that they go, this feels like home because it's such a high frequency there. Mm -hmm. And what's really interesting is, is, you know, we have full, full blown masters appearing there. We have photographs of like Baba G and Kuan Yin and Mary and a lot of the masters, all the light beans, Palladians, everything. You can see right through some of the beans. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, we also have the light ships, you know, at treetop level and things interacting with people. It's been going on for so many years. There's been tens of thousands of witnesses. And and what's really funny, despite all that, you know, there's still those people out there that are trying to assassinate your character and debunk what's going on there and things like yeah. that. Because seriously, like when's the last time you had a master appear in your bedroom? You know? Yeah, you showed me an incredible photo of Mary. You yeah. get you get some really amazing photos of these beings and people that I've met through like going to the conferences. They show me pictures that they took while at East City Branch, yeah. and it's insane. There's oh, like 50 orbs all around them. Yeah, the light spheres are there. The orbs, the uh, nature spirits are there. We have. We have photographs. It's just a place where the, the veils are very thin. And mm -hmm. so everything is going on there. We've got nature spirits. We have Bigfoot cruising through there. And we actually put peanut butter out for Bigfoot. You know, and, and there's a whole family that comes through there now and then. And they, they pick up the apples and the other stuff there. But the uh, it's just a little bit of everything is happening there. But, but the mountain is amazing because there's a base inside the mountain. It's like a galactic airport. And then there's an extreme technology level. And then below that's the inner earth guys, you know, so it's, it's like all the above. It's like a smorgasbord, you know, when you go there. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask you about. So there's like a huge mountain that you can see um, yeah. from your property, Mount Adams, and you have a lot of, there's an entrance to inner earth there or what's, what's going on with that? Yeah. We've, we filmed it. Uh, we have a lot of footage of the door opening, this massive light door. And sometimes it's a bright, kind of a turquoise, a blue-green light will open up and things come out of it. And then mm -hmm. I'll come out at night with the laser and I'll go, you know, I'll take the laser and I'll go knock, knock and hit the laser on the door and then it opens. It's really funny. And then ships come out. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people are trying to say these are campers up on the mountain. And I said, well, that camper just launched into space. You know, he just uh, he went straight up out of that out of that door and went into space. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've had uh, all kinds of scientific uh, research on it. Uh, they brought out uh, thermal vision, um, night vision, all these. Just one guy has like one hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of gear that he brought out, and. He said, you know, even with all my gear, I'm leaving with more questions than I have answers. He said, he goes, it's not people, it's not campers, it's it's cold light. It doesn't even have a, he goes, I'm looking at it through the infrared. There's no heat signature and I'm looking at it through the other lens, you know, which is the night vision. And I see it clearly as a bell. He said, if that or that was people or a vehicle or something would have a heat signature and there's, mm -hmm. there's nothing there. So it's a. Uh, you know, they went away just baffled. You know, they, mm -hmm. they don't have an explanation for it other than the, well, we know what it is. It's it's other than the obvious. They can't they can't go there for some reason. 
Yeah, no, and it, these UFOs and just the, the different beings, they they appear in ways that you would never, that you can't even really comprehend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They can, you know, we, we have, once we realize that we're a multidimensional being, we realize that we're not just a physical body. We have an astral body, an energy body, a spiritual body, and we have bodies all the way back to the source. And one of those bodies is actually an orb. It's a light sphere. And I have pictures of an orb coming out of my chest while I'm talking with Golden Light Eagle and some other elders out there. And just, it's, it's you know, you can actually leave your body travel and have 360 degree vision and jump dimensions. We have that ability. And that's what they're doing. They're they're leaving their body and coming down and checking us out. You know, and yeah. there's a lot of different. Uh, some of these orbs, we blow them up and look inside of them and there's beings that have ears like elves you know they have elven ears uh some look mm -hmm. like uh the big gold ones look like masters they have big beards and long hair uh, look like something out of uh harry potter or something you know it's kind of kind of interesting isn't but, it funny it's like it's all real <laughs> yeah, yeah it's all going on and some you blow up and you see a whole world oh my gosh orb. it's like a whole it's a doorway to a whole another dimension yeah, that um, one of the in the near the beginning. Well, at first they were appearing to me as you know, like like orbs and then physical ships and things like that. Just kind of mm -hmm. like weird phenomenon. And then I started seeing a lot of golden orbs. And one of the orbs that I caught on video, you can see like two sets of head and shoulders in a like a triangle or a pyramid in between these beings. Yeah. This orb was like this small and somebody's like there could be a whole world in that orb or a whole yeah. spaceship a whole mothership there can i have a, a photograph of a triangular a dome triangle ship that landed and it hit, it's full of orbs it's just wall to wall orbs inside of it and then i have another photograph where i was doing this tibetan meditation and you can see me come out of my body and you can see one body on the ground with my eyes closed and the other body is moving out and it, my eyes are open you know, which is really interesting. So, you know, we so can what leave did, bodies and go. I was going to say, what did you experience whenever that happened? Were you, did you like see yourself coming out of the body or, or what was it? What did that feel like? I guess is what I'm trying well, to usually, ask. Usually you go, I just did this just to prove it was possible. I had a cameraman there, a professional cameraman. And I said, okay, shoot. I said now, and he shot and he caught it because I felt mm -hmm. myself going out of body. And I just came right back on that one. But uh, but the, you can go up on the ships. You know, these ships are multidimensional. You can go to other worlds. You can, you know, you can, you can actually go to the Pleiades or the Orion Council of Light group ships. And you can go to the uh, Andromeda ships. And it's, uh, it's, it's really interesting. Some of the ships are like plasma ships. They're not physical. Mm -hmm. They're just pure energy. And when you go on that ship, you converse with the beings and, you go on a body that that is at the same frequency of the ship mm -hmm. and they can pull you out of your body. They can pull that body out of your body and take you up on the ship and teach you and have a conversation with you and work with you. What's one of your favorite places to go <laughs> out there? Like, uh, like the Pleiades or Andromeda or what's, what's been a very memorable uh, experience for you? I, I went on one of the Orion Council of light ships. That was powerful. And, and, I was in the bathtub actually meditating and, you know, I asked for it. I, I said, I want to know what this is about. Why are all these ships here? Uh, Cause I was on a spiritual journey. I had two near death experiences and I was on a major spiritual journey and creating the healing center and all the ships came because I was rising to the occasion and the other people there as well. But uh, I just said, I want to know what this is about. Why are all these ships here and, and what's my connection to it? And, and what they did, they pulled me out of body before they did, they sent a beam in and hit me in the chest. And then three gold balls of light hit me in the chest. And then then they pulled me out of my body up on the ship. And I had a, a conversation with, a, a, her name was Malia. And she's with the Orion Council of Light. And actually, J.J. Hertak in the Keys of Enoch, you know, talks about these beings. And mm -hmm. he's very aware of them. We share a lot of information. But the uh, uh, these beings are just beautiful beings when you look at them you can't tell they're they're billions of years old it, it seems like because they're they're all cultures blended into one 
So mm -hmm. you can't you can't tell if they're black or white or Asian or you know, when you look at them, you go, wow, they look like a blend of all cultures. And that's kind of what would happen over the years. The, you know, you know, everybody's DNA would blend and, and you'd look like that. But uh, beautiful beings. And, you know, I told her, I said, uh, I asked her what the gold balls were. They hit me in the chest. And she said, all your memories have been returned. And then uh, and then I and then but then she told me I couldn't stay because I had I'd have too much of a hard time adjusting to Earth again. Yeah. It's the same thing after the near death experiences. If you stay too long you have a hard time adjusting back to earth. And, and so <clears throat> I told her, I said, I want proof that this is real. And she said, you have all you need, you know? And then I went back and, uh, and when I got, when I got back, I had a big burn mark in the middle of my chest, which wow. was interesting, but it wasn't painful at all. It was just my physical body interacting with those higher frequencies. It, it left a little bit of burn mark, but Mm -hmm. It was quite interesting, but it wasn't wasn't painful. And uh, then after that, I all my memories started flashing in front of me, and I started seeing all of them. And and I've done everything, you know. I've done, I've been captain of light ships, and been you know throughout the dimensions, been before all the councils and everything. But you know, I was also a, a cripple and a beggar, and I was a Viking warrior, and I hacked off heads, and you know, I was a road bandit in one lifetime too. So. It, it's really good to, to round all that out because then you can practice forgiveness and unconditional love because you've been all of it. Yeah. And, and you're not threatened by it anymore. You understand it because you've been all of it. And I think that's what we're really here for is to gain, gain wisdom through experience. And, uh, right. you know, un unfortunately, you know, I always tell people, nobody knows what another soul needs for completion and, and everybody's working things out down here. And, and so you have to, you have to kind of stay out of judgment because unless you are aware of all the other planes and dimensions and past lives and everything else, you know, you, you really can't mm -hmm. judge. And if you do, you're just establishing your own ignorance and character, basically. Right. I feel like we're working through a lot of karma down here. <laughs> oh, God. I, think, I think there's a whole lot of karma and somebody just stuck a blender into it, you know, one of those egg beaters or something, because, boy, it's up. It's up for everybody. And I, I've never seen, you know, I, I don't want to be negative, but I've just never seen so much uh, gossip and rumors and backstabbing and and uh, competition and jealousy. You know, a lot of this stems from jealousy. But uh, uh, it's like, seriously, guys, you know, I said, you know, we have to rise to the occasion. If we are going to have contact with these higher dimensional beings, they're very high frequency. They're very loving and joyous and and total service oriented, you know, there's no ego there and there's no uh, selfishness or anything else. They're in full service mode and until, and so we have to rise to the occasion to be able to work with these beings. And, you know, the UFO community, I hate to say it, even the spiritual community has kind of missed the mark on that one. Yeah. Well, I've noticed lately there's been a lot of um, the, the the problem is or the i guess the the dark agenda is to divide us so exactly. that's that's just going going right into it yeah literally and i asked yeah. the ets i'm like how is this happening in this community i don't know too much details but i have heard you know bits and pieces um and they basically what i've come to is it, it's a human thing we need to drop it yeah yeah <laughs> It is, it is, but it, it's more than that. It's, you know, basically what it is, is that we're or, all carrying wounds and traumas and raw conclusions from past experience. And some are multidimensional, some are on other levels. And these other entities know us better than we know ourselves. They, they know where our hooks are. They know where they can amplify things and create division and againstness. And if somebody doesn't have strong moral char character, moral fiber, they can get in. There's all kinds of chinks in their armor and they can get in and just manipulate your friends and family and everything. It's amazing. They can make your life hell if they want to. <clears throat> so you got to clear all those those old you know, wrong conclusions from past experiences out. And you also have to practice that loving detachment you know some people say you know don't give a shit attitude <laughs> you almost have to you almost have to do that you have to develop your own inner sensitivity which is your bs meter basically 
Yeah. And then you also, at the same time, you have to practice loving detachment. And I, and I tell people being a Christ doesn't mean being a doormat. You know, there's mm -hmm. times you have to go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You know, like you're making statements out here. Let's see, let's see some evidence. Let's see the proof, you know. And, the, mm -hmm. and it's just like, you know, the rumors and the gossip travels the earth twice before the truth has time to tie its shoes, you know. So, so mm -hmm. anyway, it's, you know, it goes back to the old, the old uh, process oriented therapies, you know, about, yeah. about you know, stop, right. projecting, stop blaming, blaming, you know, don't get into it. I like what Byron Katie says. She said, there's three kinds of business. There's, there's your business, there's other people's business and there's God's business. And they said, other people's business is God's business. You know? but, yeah. Yeah. And, and we'll take a quantum leap in evolution if we practice that. Yeah. Right. And there's something that you mentioned on our interview, which if you guys haven't checked that out, it's on uh, James's rumble. Um, you mentioned something that I have, that I've been taught and, and share with people also a lot of these, you said that these negative forces get in through trauma. And that's literally exactly what the ETs told me as my gifts were developing as I, you know, and, and I started experiencing psychic attack and then just kind oh, of like yeah. drama, drama around me. Like my life was becoming pretty, it was tough. And uh, that's what they told me. They're like, they're getting in through your root chakra. You need to heal these wounds. And so I focused on <clears throat> healing and it eventually like it started to go away. Yeah, they're masters of the first three chakras, which are survival, sex, and power. And so, so those are the first, first three chakras. And if you look at like Hollywood, the music industry, it's all based on survival, sex, and power, basically. And mm -hmm. you know, you've done me wrong and victim and all that stuff, you know. So, so anyway, that's 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 the they don't want to take you past that into the heart chakra, which is love. They don't want to i mean how many movies are just based on love you know or are actually higher dimensions or are talking about evolution and things like that you know they have some they have some movies out there but they're far and few between uh but i know a lot of people in the movie and a lot of people have come out to the ranch and just had their minds blown and you know they said the only way you can make it in hollywood like a movie is to you got to have boy meets girl boy falls in love with girl boy saves the world or boy saves girl boy saves the world or you have boy meets girl you know they fall in love girls <laughs> saves the boy and saves the world they said if you veer off of that format at all you're toast your your movie's not going to go anywhere and you have to keep it on about 11 year old mentality you know mm -hmm. and, and then you're going to make it big wow yeah. And there was something else I wanted to mention real quick about that. The That's a good point about the lower three chakras. I did also want to ask you more about that because you mentioned that on our other interview. But yeah. a lot of this trauma, just so that people know, and what I, what I see in my readings a lot also is it comes from the Lyran Wars, Orion Wars, and then the Atlant Atlantis and Lemurian um, War and Trauma. Yeah, the I know the Orion Wars, it's big time. That comes up a lot. And people that were killed in those war wars and the loss of family and loved ones and things like that, that trauma is actually a door. And once they traumatize you like that, they can they can keep traumatizing you until you release that and heal that and take the charge out of it. But it's almost like the trauma they created is actually a door so they can continue to track you and and create it. And I know when we're dealing with childhood stuff, we find people, kids at two or three years old that are being traumatized with night terror and things like that because they're very powerful beings and they incarnated and they, they tried to shut them down right away by activating anything they could, you know, to, to shut them down so they wouldn't stay open or, or reconnect. And, and that's happening a lot, but What's nice is those beans are being cleaned out right now. There's a massive cleanup. The higher beans are coming in and uh, they know how to deal with that stuff. And then all the way down to the physical, you know, it's a multidimensional war or cleanup process we're in or planetary liberation or awakening, whatever you want to call it. And it's multidimensional. And what's happening goes all the way down to the white hats. 
and, and the white hats are cleaning out the dumps and the and the other stuff and and uh, I found I was talking to her about that I found out by a bunch of uh, of uh, people that are highly trained you know to do that stuff they said yeah we we use your techniques to clear the entities you know to clear out the, the other level stuff you know and call in these other beings to help us and and they are getting a lot of help now which is great and the inner earth beings have actually stepped in too and they're helping clean out you know that that mess so so it's they're they're done you know they they lost basically we're just walking through the dregs of time Right. And uh, something interesting happened to, uh, for me like a, a couple weeks ago, as I was waking up before I like fully regained consciousness, um, I was starting to become conscious. I was cleaning the astral realm, yeah. Call, yeah. calling on Archangel Michael, clearing all of this stuff out, bringing in the light. And then like I started coming to, I was like, whoa, have I been doing that in my sleep all night? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you wake up tired. Yeah, it's funny because I used Michael a lot. Michael was one of my go-to guys if I got into trouble. And then I have other Andromedan warriors. And then there's the there's a group called the Laka and the Jasai, and they're planetary protectors. They're they're like up ninth and thirteenth dimensional beings that are coming in now. And uh, I've been using them a lot. And I use the lion beings a lot. The the they're seventh dimensional lion beings, and they. You know, I asked him, I go, what do you do with these reptilians? And he goes, and he said, you know, we're 17 feet tall. He said, it's it's no match. We just throw them down and rub their bellies. He was joking about it, but but one of the line beings I was working with. But uh, yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, but we do, we need that protection right now because there are some nasty things. There's, you know, royal reptilian serpent beings and tall grays and some pretty nasty entities out there so uh it's it's kind of out of a lot of our pay grades so we need the help you know to clear these other beings out right and you have a really great um clearing prayer on your website that somebody sent to me um um a little while back it's a uh, great so if you guys want to check that out it's on uh is it what's what's the website it's under healing healing unseen negative influences and uh there's a beautiful prayer there too the original prayer of, of uh, the Lord's prayers on there in Aramaic. And I put that on there just to show people that, you know, the original Lord's prayer is, it's, it's you know, it says, oh, cosmic birther, father, mother, God, there's no, there's, there's no uh, gender in it. You know, it's, it's kind of like, it's so, it's not, there's no judgment in it. You know, it's, it's all inclusive. It's very powerful prayer. And uh, I think people should look at that because they'll get a whole different interpretation of what happened in the past. And, mm. and you know, that goes back to the, the bearded gods, you know, all these religions have their bearded gods. You know, you got the Egyptian gods, you got the Greek gods, uh, the Hebrew gods and, and the ancient Larians and the, and the, the Anunnaki and they, uh, you know, they all, they, they all have their bearded gods. And I, I tell people, I said, there's, even in the Bible, there's two gods. There's the Old Testament God, which, which is jealous and wrathful and wrathful and kind of a genocidal maniac, basically. And then there's the New Testament God, which is all loving and all forgiving, the one that Jesus aligned with. And so people need to realize that, that the Bible is kind of a, uh, it's, it's history according to the, men but it's his story you know and they wrote it down to the best of their abilities with the reference points they had at the time but there's so much more to the story and there's you know the bible with the apocrypha has all the women's writings in there and, and things like that so people need to really expand their knowledge base concerning that and expand their god you know like how i have this game i like to play how big is your god you know is it is it just a little old man with a beard and a laptop? You know, is it multidimensional? Mm -hmm. Are there other planes and dimensions involved? Are there other civilizations out there that are involved? You know, how, and you know, is it the one consciousness that encompasses all consciousness on all planes and dimensions throughout the multiverse? You know, mm -hmm. and you take people, you expand out like that and it kind of ends all the division and separation games. Yeah, we're all one. That was one of the first, like, yeah. was one of the big things that the ETs taught me in the beginning they're <laughs> we're all one and they really put it into perspective i'm like uh so me and you are one me and my neighbor are one 
you know, we're, we're all one. <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody asked what the name of, I'm sorry, I forgot what the name of the website is, where the clearing oh, core is. ECETI.org. Okay. ECETI.org. Okay. ECETI.org. Yeah, that's a great um, clearing prayer. Guys, check out his website. Um, I was going to ask, so what, so what kind of other, just the past month and the past couple weeks, a lot of like reptilian stuff has been coming up. Yeah. Um, I've gotten, after the, the conference in Orlando, I got some memories back just flooded with memories that I didn't even know that I had experiences with the reptilians. I haven't even shared this on my channel yet. Mm -hmm. And then I had to really like work through the effect of becoming aware of that and then kind yeah. of like feeling it. Um, and I don't know, it's just crazy. There's just been like reptilian stuff everywhere recently. So it's wondering kind of like what your take on that was. I feel like it's, it's yeah. coming to the surface to, to uh, be healed, but I feel like there's other, there's other things going on yeah. as well. It, it's been going on all along, but now we're becoming aware of it. So we're actually becoming more sensitive. Our telepathic abilities are expanding. Uh, our inner sensitivity is, is kicking up and it's because we're moving to a highly energized place in space mm -hmm. and the whole solar system is being energized right now. We're going through a quantum leap in evolution and the sun's reacting to it. Uh, other, we're getting thousands of hits from outside sources of, of energy coming in, you know, from Cygnus and some of these other places. The, uh, there's so much energy coming. The whole electromagnetic light spectrum has changed. There's new levels in it, and it's off the scale. And so uh, the Schumann resonance, too. If you watch the Schumann resonance, if you start feeling all wonkers and you're going, what is going on, and you're getting a little disoriented, you know, go look at the Schumann resonance and see what it's doing. Or, or look at the sun activity. You might be hit by, being hit by a CME or a solar flare, but mm -hmm. we're in it. And, and there's, there's cycles that we're in and then there's waves and we're taking, you know, some of these waves were going really high and then we drop down and go really low. And, and the Tibetans called a soul merge. You know, we're actually going through a soul merge process where we're merging with our soul. So we're going to get really high and then we got to dump the baggage, you know, that it, that amplifies and, and accelerates the baggage and, there is a phenomenon here on the planet that I call it the amplification of mirror thing. And uh, the yogis say, talk about, they said, as you, um, the closer you get to nirvana, the more the demons rear their ugly heads. Or the higher your frequency, the more you mirror back to people uh, and amplify what they love and don't love about themselves. And so if you're an advanced being, you know, you'll, you'll use that three fingers principle, you know, one finger pointed out and three back, you know, three are coming back to me and you, you're going, what is it in me that's upset by this? What is it? In, you know, and, and you'll evolve rather than project and blame, but mm -hmm. there's not, you know, unfortunately there's very few advanced people there that are taking personal responsibility. They're competing, you know, there, there's a lot of jealousy. There's a lot of projection, a lot of blaming going on. And, and, you know, a lot like Corey calls it end time madness. You know, everybody has a different name for it, but they they all knew this was coming. And it's, you know, I, I'm going to make a T-shirt saying uh, it's not my problem. This is your opportunity to heal, <laughs> you know, or I have a yeah. T-shirt already that says I'm not your I'm not your father. I'm not your mother. I'm not your ex lover. I'm just sitting here, you know, <laughs> and so right. uh, and, I like it. Yeah. And so. Uh, uh, people, it, it's getting really interesting right now. And, and uh, I've been spending a lot of time, you know, we're, we're in the process of creating the city of Hawaii. And I just spend in the past uh, at least year just fighting the jungle, basically clearing the jungle back and opening up the coffee fields and the magnet fields and, and things like that. And I've just been out of the loop completely. And I still hear all these things going around, you know, and, and stuff from, years ago is still flying around and it's already mm -hmm. been bunked and everything but yeah it's it's uh it's kind of crazy and the one other thing i wanted to add too is that uh when when i invited uh corey good to come and speak at the ranch 
all hell broke loose. I had a certain TV station that kind of rhymes with Maya <laughs> coming after me. I had all the people around them coming after me. And uh, I was amazing, like all hell broke loose. And I go, God, what is this about? And then I realized I read David, you know, Wilcox's letter on why he left. And I go, now I understand and, and uh, you know, why they left. But, uh, you know, people need to research that. But there's there's also a lot of satanic Luciferian stuff. And I, I've been very supportive of the divine feminine all my life. And because I'm aligned with Mary and she actually saved me when I was a kid and things like that. And I've also been very outspoken about the the child and sex trafficking and everything else. I've been very vocal about that. And uh, and so now I'm, I, I'm having people accusing me of that. <laughs> and I'm going, I'm going, I go, how, that is just pure evil. You know, uh, what is wrong with you? And, uh, you know, even, even one woman, she said, I've got you, I've got your file, you know. And, and uh, I guess there's a guy named James Wilson Gilliland in, in Seattle. And I, I don't live in Seattle. I've never been to I'm, I'm, I'm in, uh, I think I was in Seattle one time for like a day. But uh, uh, I live way up in the mountains in Trout Lake, Washington. And it's more on the Oregon border. But, uh, and my name, my middle name's Alan. And so I had to take my license, take a photograph of it, put it up on the, on mm -hmm. the internet just to cover, cover that. And they never... They never apologize. That's one thing out of all this mudslinging, I've never received an apology, even even though it's been proven inaccurate or wrong. Or or we have a thing that he said he, you know, a lot of people come with agendas, and when their agendas aren't fulfilled, they become victims. And mm -hmm. the internet really amplifies everything and it comes up. And and so, you know, that's basically what the, a lot of victims are. They're just people that their agendas didn't get fulfilled you know they had some other alternative agenda but mm -hmm. uh, it's it's kind of interesting over the years watching this there's there's a part of it that goes oh, i gotta finish gotta finish the mission you know i came here to do this and things there's another part of me that's going you know people are crazy you know i just i just want to be out in the forest right now and working in the gardens and things like that yeah yeah something that you said that really stuck with me is and, the, and this is what I feel that part of the reason why the ETs don't just come down and meet us face with face to face, our vibrations have to slowly rise because it digs up all of the negativity. So even just, yeah. I'm sure maybe even meeting you in person or coming to East Eddie Ranch, just stuff just starts bubbling up that is yeah. probably, probably projected, um, onto you or around them. So I, I will apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I just, I, you know, I try to practice being, you know, love and kindness, basically that's my religion and try to be kind and service and help people to make their own contact, their own contact with creator and their own contact with the higher dimensional beings. And we're just focusing on empowering the individual there. But yeah. uh, for some reason that's a major threat. And I, I think, also, because that's the key. That's the key is healing, helping yeah. people heal. That is literally the key. And empowering the individual. You know, yeah. wait, wait, there's no guru. We don't have a guru. There's no, I, I won't allow it. I won't allow the worship because that diminishes your own connection with source. But uh, the, uh, it, it's so important that uh, I, I, I found out why this is such a threat. I, I, I go, God, this doesn't make any sense. I'm, I came down here and I'm, <laughs> I'm just being loving and kind. All these people are having spontaneous healings here and, and the masses are appearing, the ships are appearing. It's all there. It's all on video. It's been photographed. It's been witnessed. You know, I have the highest, uh, the highest uh, people, you know, in, in NASA and in Boeing, triple PhD, Boeing injured, all these people, uh, Air Force Base commanders that have testified, this is real. The ships are real here. And, you know, all of that, you go, oh, man, everybody would just suck this up. The UFO community would love this. You know, this yeah. is this is what they've been waiting for. And they're the worst. I mean, they they eat their young and it's a controlled narrative. And if you if you uh, have all the evidence and there's a lot of jealousy, there's a lot of competition. And then the narrative is very controlled and they want to keep it far away or in the past, Roswell and things like that or they want to keep it uh, dark and foreboding. They don't want 
contact with very spiritually and technologically advanced beings because you know they've transcended war and disease and they have technologies beyond our wildest dreams and you know they have med beds look like tinker toys you know <laughs> they they have uh, a lot of them can just heal with their own consciousness their own thought but uh the, and we uh, can learn to do that as well exactly yeah and I don't know. You would think this would be really met with like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. But it's not. And well, I, I think I, a lot, a lot of people really do appreciate and love what you're doing. I wouldn't have yeah. known about any of the, the other stuff, but um, you have a lot of eyes on you too, though. So I understand yeah, yeah. how that could, you know, but yeah, there I know. Are, I, people go, I wish I was you. And I go, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. You're under a microscope. And if you step out of people's beliefs on who you should be, they come at you with a vengeance. But, you know, I've been shot at several times. I've had my brake lines cut and, and uh, lug nuts taken off and, you know, all kinds of warnings. But, uh, you know, I've always been protected. I've always had somebody looking after me. So I don't even worry about it. I haven't died a couple of times. It's like, so what? I just get, get to go back, you know. But mm -hmm. uh, what happened? How old were you whenever you had the um, the near death experiences? You had two. Well, of them? I was I was five years old in the hospital and I was dying of bronchopneumonia, and they kept telling my parents that I wasn't going to make it through the night, and and a being kept appearing to me and she was all in blue, very beautiful being, and she would talk to me and she would stroke my head and then I'd pull through. And she did it several times. And I, I, I imagine I just, my parents probably just went through a fit on that one. I'm sure it's probably pretty bad. And then, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> They're both on the other side right now, but that's yeah. <clears throat> good. It's a good thing. But they, uh, I know where they are. So it's no big, it's my, my dad's up on the Ryan ships right now, but, uh, but the- uh, He's on what ships right now? He's on the Orion Council of Light ships. Like, oh, that's beautiful. When he died, his last words were beam me up. And I was at his side. I go, why would he say beam me up? And he just went. He goes, beam me up and gone. Right. So I go out and I take a camera and I go click, click. I took a couple of pictures. And I got this beautiful turquoise ship right over the house. Oh, and, wow. Uh, yeah. And so heaven's not really clouds and harps and that people would like to pass over. It's, it's much more vast than that. You know, we go mm -hmm. back to our our families and our civilizations and some we incarnated from, and, you know, there's so many people that incarnate right now from these higher civilizations and they're just, they're being activated right now and waking up and figuring it out. And they're in, they're in very high places, believe it or not. You know, it's, it's, uh, and you're going to see that coming out. There's, you know, but there's a plan. Uh, I love a friend of mine said that once he said, you know, God's given its best to humanity. Mm -hmm for these times and <clears throat> they're being activated. And so we just have to wake up and figure out what our job is, why we're here, mm -hmm. what our own unique soul purpose is and get on with it because we didn't come to be absorbed by this mess. We came to change it and, and right. clean it up. It's time to begin creating the new earth. Exactly. And, and we've pretty much done that. He said in here in Hawaii too, we're doing the same thing, but Hawaii here we have, I have all these photographs of these huge, bright blue beans. They almost look like wings appearing here. Uh, we've had a lot of the elders come here uh, with Hawaiian names, and they're in the, on the other side, and they're coming in and hanging out. Uh, we've had a lot of nature spirits we've connected with here and, and uh, had a little encounter with Pele, which was very interesting. But uh, uh, she's, she's not, you know, people... People are all freaked about. They have all these scare stories about her and everything else. But uh, she, she's like she's like Kuan Yin. It's wrathful compassion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, if, if you fly right, straighten up and fly right, and uh, there's no problem. If you start screwing up, you might have to look at what you're doing. You know. Mm -hmm. you in. But very powerful. But when I came here, I, I sat with her, and she came in, and I just told her what I was planning on doing, and and I said if I trespass in any way or if I if I am stepping on any cultural toes or anything I said let me know that's not my intention you know I'm just here to help people to awaken and heal and and give back to the land and and uh, clean up the land I mean we had two massive dump trucks here of taking you know old refrigerators and 
and stoves and just trash off the land and tires and things like that. And now it's all cleaned up. It's beautiful. Oh. And, uh, but uh, I always, whenever I go to a place, it's, looks a hell of a lot better when I leave, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. There were some people in the chat asking how, um, how it is going in Hawaii and kind of what your plans with that. And I wanted to know, yeah, like what kind of beings and experiences you're having already there. Yeah, it's been, lately it's been almost like 24 seven reclaiming the land, cleaning up the land and painting and restoration of a, of an old house here. And uh, it's beautiful now, It's that's done. It's all been cleaned up and painted. And nice bamboo floors in here and everything. It's really nice now. And got the water system and it's all, it's off the grid, it's all uh, self-contained, which is great. Okay. And, and now we're working on the outside and building rock walls and planting and planting a lot of uh, fruit trees and things like that. I mean, the land itself has, uh, uh, sapata trees i think uh it's got papaya it's got five different types of avocados on it and it's it's got a huge coffee orchard and mac nut orchard and and uh so you can bananas you know all the basics are here but uh you can you know the uh, the the mango trees here are the biggest on the island they're just massive you know, wow. so, so you can just forage here you know if everything hit the fan you could just forage and Oh, nice. Have plenty to eat, you know, which is, which is important. Yeah. I know where you're going for the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got to wait yet. <laughs> you know, the, the apocalypse actually is the great uncovering. Yeah. If you look at the definition of the apocalypse, it's a time where everything like creator, whatever you want it comes in and just everything is, it comes to the surface and all the masks come down. Everybody's seen are seen for what they are. And we're in the middle of that right now. And, especially after this last election that that's we got to see really clearly what that's all about. And that's all going to just explode and hear mm -hmm. real soon. Mm -hmm. So get undone. But, uh, I, you know, I tell people, don't worry. It's, it's, you know, we got this, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a learning process. And a lot of people have to have to some hard lessons. They have to see it right in their face and then they'll realize right. how, how ugly things are. But, uh, it's it's under control yeah yeah i was gonna ask what are your thoughts on what's going on currently and i really like your attitude about it because it's very similar basically like mine <laughs> like we got this and things are just gonna get really really ugly um until people the truth will set you free though it's just yeah. gonna, it's gonna get really really ugly until people wake up but it has to be revealed exactly and you know like you know, you got to you got to go within and find out why you're here and what your sole purpose is. But uh, with a lot of people, it's good. Just some people need to go and really expose it or working on that. That's their destiny. But other people, you know, rather than get in the middle of all this mess, you know, you might be good to get out of Dodge, you know, get out of town a little bit and, and uh, create a food bank and know where your water is coming from and things like that. And just then if anything happens, I like I mean, this sounds unspiritual, but there's this little old lady. I loved it. And she was down in her basement and she was sitting on all these rice and beans and everything. And she had her 357 Magnum in her, in her lap, you know, and she goes, she goes, no, I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> you know, She goes, I'm not worried about the future. She goes, I'm not afraid of any, anything. And, wow. uh, and my grandmother uh, comes out of New Mexico and my dad comes out of New Mexico and he was involved with a lot of, of activity there in the Roswell stuff The the mm -hmm. first responders, the sheriffs actually went to my grandmother and talked to her because they were really shaken and upset. And she was the school teacher. And she told them, she said, of course, there's life out there. She goes, you know, how vast it is out there, you know, and, and they couldn't even hold a coffee cup when they were talking to her. They were just white as a sheet. And, wow. and uh, they had to talk to her. So I know all that stuff happened. It was real. But, mm -hmm. you know, they're trying to you know, everybody's got a new story about Roswell coming out, you know, and, and you just go, come on, guys. Mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, Hockham's razor. It's obvious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. What happened there is they, they had three or four different radars and they're testing these radars, white sands and all these other. And they mm -hmm. basically crossed the beams and knocked down. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's why that ship came down. It ran. It scrambled their their 
radar or whatever you call it. And then they hit two ships hit. It wasn't just one, two ships hit. And one was just obliterated and the other one, uh, you know, and they have the bodies and they have everything else. And it's just like, come on, that was what, 70, I don't know how many years ago that was that. Mm-hmm. It was so long ago. It's just like, mm-hmm. but that's the whole thing. Let's keep it in the past. You know, there's contact happening now. You know, it's happening right. already. You can have your own personal contact. And mm-hmm. it depends on your consciousness on how close that contact is. But, you know, you can see the ships and you can see the doors open and the beans all over the mountain and, and uh, treetop level ships come in. And, you know, not just some we we filmed 200 ships one night. It was there's so many. But uh, mm-hmm. just, just the other night, I filmed 15 ships just in a half an hour here. Wow. But uh, uh, they're they're here. I mean. We have a t-shirt that says they're here, get over it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And yeah. all this stuff is just a controlled narrative. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, if you talk to the major studios, the producers and those guys like ancient. Uh, e- Alien. Yeah. yeah, I won't say it. <laughs> okay. I and mean, they came out to the ranch and they just totally censored me completely. Out of, all you see is my hand grabbing for a camera. And I told all about who they are, why they're here, their agendas, you know, our ancient history. They censored all of it, all of that out. All you saw is my hand reaching for a camera. And mm-hmm. I know why, but they're they're all about entertainment. They're not there to educate people or not there on behalf of the higher beings or anything. They're just there for entertainment and mm-hmm. they don't want to give you the answers. They just want to keep the questions going. And they also are tied in some other nefarious forces that do not want me mm-hmm. on stage you know they don't want me talking wow. things I, yeah i feel like like 10 years ago ancient aliens was that that was my kind of introduction i feel like it's a yeah. good th- that was kind of like the the prequel kind of like we opening some you know opening people's eyes but now it's like okay we need to move on to the next step and contact yeah. is happening we need to learn about these beings familiarize ourselves with them, make contact with our star families, raise our consciousness, our, our frequency. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of beings out there and it's probably like for people who are um, beginning to see them and see UFOs, it can be very confusing. Yeah. And there's so much, you know, disinformation, there's a controlled narrative and you've got the shills in there stirring everything up and and, uh, you know, it's, it's, and then you got the other entities, the darker beings coming through people that don't know how to keep their fields clear that are throwing monkey wrenches in it. And there's a lot of people that are just looking for fame and fortune and they're in it, they're come, come from is off, you know, so they can be easily manipulated. But that's kind of what's going on in the UFO community right now. There's very few people that are actually holding a frequency talking about the higher dimensional beings. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting because when, I mean, I saw firsthand, uh, a lot of people ask me, why do you support Corey Good or why do you support this person or that? You know, I have a show and I have everybody on the show and they get to tell their story. It doesn't mean I believe all their stories, but mm-hmm. you know, we have to admit Corey did bring out all the, the first information in depth, you know, information and very accurate information about, you know, solar ward and the secret space fleet and everything. And that's one level of, of what's going on there's higher levels that are happening as well but you know he he uh, took a lot of heat from it and and i saw what he was up against when i invited him to speak at the ranch and then i got the wrath of all all of those people uh, but mm. uh, they just need to chill out you know it's like you leave your crap at the door you know let's all decide what's the end goal we want to make contact why do you want to make contact? Because these beings are very spiritually and technologically advanced. They can help restore the earth. They can help us heal. They can set things mm-hmm. right, you know, and uh, and that's the end goal. The other stuff is just, it's, it's just mud, you know, mm-hmm. right? mud, you know, it's just like, and I, you know, they, they keep trying to pull me down in the mud and I just take a sabbatical. I just go work in nature. And, yeah. And, you know, and let them, but it, it is, there's, I was really meditating. I go, I wonder what, what is driving this, this kind of energy, this stuff going on. And what I realized is a lot of it's just jealousy, mm-hmm. you know, cause we're doing it and we have the evidence, we have the witnesses, we have the, the videos, we have everything that they act like they're looking for. That's mm-hmm. one thing. 
and then there's other negative forces that don't want this these higher beings to be known about or people interacting with them as well mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot of levels to this going on and then there's there's all these woke movements you know uh going on and uh the, the you know the divisions between genders and all this stuff is happening and yeah you know, you've got the toxic male I think a toxic male is a male that doesn't respect their their maleness you know their masculinity I think that's toxic and and an enlightened male is a whole different story too but uh, uh, but they've they've switched it around and you know it's like we're both male and female within ourselves. And our, our subjective side is the left side. This energy comes in and receives the energy. Our, our objective side is the right side where we make things happen. And mm -hmm. it's the doer part of us. And we both have that, you know, to one balance or one degree or another in ourselves. And, uh, yeah, you can be, uh, you know, you can be a real aggressive male or things like that. I think that can be toxic. Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm probably the most non-aggressive person you ever met you know I, I don't i just don't do that but mm -hmm. the, uh, that can be toxic and but it's just balance it's mm -hmm. we all got to find that balance within ourselves and and if you're too subjective you're going to be run over by these other energies if you're too objective you're not even going to be aware of these other energies mm -hmm. it's just getting that objective subjective balance within ourselves right yeah i like that marrying the right and left brain the the masculine exactly. and feminine um is very that would be very helpful <laughs> yeah like one of the practices we use is you we practice yigong and it's a very very ancient practice and it's like the original airbender stuff and you can actually work with the elements with this but what you're doing is that when you're doing the movements like water if you're doing the water you know you're going like this we well, have to you're moving your hands and both arms and you're going back and forth from one side to the other. And so it makes you balance out your body. And it also balances out your brain when you do this. Wow. And it's called the practice of no mind. You get your mind has something to do. It has to do the, the, the movements. So it's focused on that. And while you're doing these movements and you get into this altered state and then the higher dimensional energy can come in. And, and then there's postures that you, that you use, that you sit with, that the energy can really flow through. It's, it's, mm -hmm. in, you know, that, that those are things that we, some of the things we teach there and we teach the self mastery classes and the ambassador training and things like that. But everything is really geared to empowering the individual, you know, everything we do. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love that. We need, we need more of that. So thank you. Um, I was going to ask what other types of, kind of like tips or things would you would you suggest to people to help them so qigong doing that would yeah. help do you have some other kind of things you have found very helpful yeah we we do yigong it's like yi gong g-o-n-g and it's the most ancient form it goes back to the to, to the llamas and back to way back to Lance and Lance and Mary it's a very ancient form but that's a good one. I think med meditation on the website, we have both a world and personal healing meditation wrapped into one. And when you do this, you go through every cell of your body, every atom of your body. And you're clearing that you're going up through the levels. You're clearing up your mental body, your emotional body, your astral body on up. And then you, you reach your higher bodies. And then, then at the end, we direct that energy back to the earth, you know, for, and so you're actually coming from your God self or cosmic self or some other, wherever you can get a vibration continuum. And then you can send energy back to the earth and visualize the earth healing and filling with light and things like that. So uh, that's a really good one. Uh, meditation. I, I really suggest, I tell people eat close to the earth, get away from all the uh, processed foods, uh, get pure water, know where your water is coming from, make sure it's pure and drink a lot of it. Uh, get out in nature as much as you can. Take your shoes off. Walk on the grass, and uh, uh, and just practice kindness, basically, and and learn practice that loving detachment because you're gonna have shit thrown at you. <laughs> That's just the way it is right now. It, we're in a shit storm. Right? They may sound unspiritual, but we are in the in a shit storm. And 
and you can see it on every level, not just politics, not just the economy, not just you can see this is on this is a multidimensional experience. And so we really got to become sovereign and and get aligned with nature and, and uh, clean our, our own bodies up and clean up our own consciousness. Yeah, the the diet has been very, very important. The ETs have been <laughs> um, telling me, you know, they told me spinach as much as possible. Cinnamon. Yeah cinnamon they told me eggs too i know not everybody does eggs but there it is a brain food so if you do them cool if not don't shoot the messenger but that was their message yeah. for me <laughs> well you know your brain needs a certain type of fat to restore itself and and this is going to get a lot of people upset but there's a lot of breathitarians out there and some some really aren't breath they say they are but they sneak food all the time but if you keep doing that your the fat that your body needs it starts taking it from the brain and then they get all spacey and they go, oh, what's going on? You know, because they don't have the right fats or the right proteins and enzymes and things. But yeah. uh, we have like at the ranch, we have about, we have chickens. In Hawaii, the chickens are everywhere. It's like the state bird, you know. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, at the ranch, we have about 50 chickens that are laying and, and uh, plenty of eggs. And, wow. and we do huge gardens there and, and grow a lot of our own food. And I'm putting in gardens here right now, too. But That's incredible. It, it's good to get self-sustaining and it's not to me go that's a lot people go that's a lot of work it's not work you know it's it's work if your mind thinks it's work mm -hmm. but it, if you're doing what brings you joy it's not work and you have all this energy and you can do all kinds of things but if you're trudging off to some cubicle that you hate you know that's that just sucks your energy dry you know it's and all the stress that comes with those jobs too. Stress is a killer too. You got to eliminate stress. stress yeah. Life. Yeah. I knew that's what uh, killed my father was stress. I immediately I'm knew. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, thank you. But then that, that woke me up to how important mental health and also diet. Diet was one of the other things, heart disease and things yeah. like that without going on to a tangent. But that was my big wake up call to dig into those things more. And then there's a, so much corruption around, you know, the food industries, farm, pharma, yeah. medical, all of that stuff. But, yeah, why, um, why are people out living their kids right now? You know, people need to ask those questions because in the old days you didn't have all this stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. you had very little of it. And uh, it's kind of interesting, but you know, interesting thing happened to me that I was meditating once and, and, uh, and when my dad crossed over, I already, I was already talking with him. He was, he had kind of dementia in the end and he was mm -hmm. gone half the time, but I was seeing him on the other levels and I was always communicating with him. And, and when I go and see him, he always remembered me. He goes, James, you know, like, like, and, uh, and some of the other kids, he's going, who are you? You know, it's kind of weird. And, but I realized, cause I was still communicating. So when he did, I was so glad when he crossed over because he was in this body that was just done. And he was suffering and he didn't even know where he was and everything. And, and, uh, and I, when I connected, when he crossed over, the first thing he did was he was, he created a scenario where he had a, his red Jeep, he had his fishing poles, he had his cabin and he was fishing and sitting. And he did that for a while to get that out of his system. And then he went back to the ship, but mm -hmm. he's on a six dimensional ship right now. But uh, uh, you know, when you realize how awesome it is, what, what happens it's like a tight shoe taking it off you know it's not it's not so bad and having died myself a couple of times I, I death doesn't bother me i i get more upset of an animal dying you know i'm trying to heal it and, yeah. and, and uh working really hard on it but humans i know where they go and i know and they're much mm -hmm. easier to work with on the other side as well but uh yeah but the funny thing about death it, it doesn't happen it's it's uh but the other thing is the physical body it it what it goes from from a more complex form back to the atom and it mm -hmm. just disassembles itself back to the atom and the life force is in the atom and the soul moves on so that's an illusion it never happens mm -hmm. just, the form that you've gotten used to changes yeah that's, that's the only thing happening and when somebody's dead in your mind they're dead mm -hmm. if they're not dead in your mind they're still talking to you you know they're still there yeah, so it's important for people to realize that that they're just a thought away. You know, we we have to let go of the the separation, that the belief in separation, and that they're dead. We have to let go of that, 
and they can come and guide us and help us. And most of them come back and they apologize almost ever since they come back, they go, you're right. You know, I'm sorry. You know, that's one of the things I hear a lot, you know, like you're right. <laughs> Dad was waiting for me. You know, it's like, uh, you know, Aww. things like that. It's kind of interesting, but, uh, yeah, it's, we, we just make such a heavy thing out of that, out of, you know, it, I think you should have a good Irish wake, you know, that's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whenever I, when, after the UFOs started coming and I began, um, <laughs> learning about spirituality, I had my dad visit me, my grandma, yeah. my uncle, all of these different, and I even had an ET, um, ET version of my dad. And that made me feel a lot better because yeah. there was this whole ship filled with people that I know here on earth. Um, and some of them have passed, but they're, they're up there kicking it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're having a good time. And, uh, you know, it's just like, I really, I was thinking about that yesterday. I was meditating on that. And I just said, you know, we don't have the luxury of dealing with all this nonsense right now, all the division and separation and, I mean, there's so much happening right now that we really got to get, you know, we've got to rise with the occasion. We have to raise our frequencies. And if we are going to stay here and, and this other stuff is going out, it's going by the wayside. It's not frequency specific to the evolution of the earth. And so, you know, it's, you know, when I, when people pull this stuff, I go, good luck with that and see in your light review, you know, it's like, uh, you know, you're, you know, you're and karma too is all being accelerated and amplified. So that's coming around full bore as well. And so I've seen that happen, but you know, I always tell people you're going to hurt yourself, you know, because there's, there's some very powerful beings hanging out at East Eddy and, and if you want to go that route, have fun with it, you know, to, you know, it's like you're only establishing your own character. Mm -hmm. and, uh, ignorance basically but uh you know you you think it's it's always baffled me it, it's like it, it's like you know he said he should be like another magigori or something you know we've had full-on mary appear there we've got photographs of her and everything and that picture by the way is incredible yeah right? you, you can use that too you can use that whenever you want but okay, the yeah. um, but what's interesting is and i'm almost glad it didn't happen that way but because because we talk about higher consciousness and physics and quantum physics and ETs and things like that, we're not in the religious, you know, program. So they aren't coming, you know, or, or everything outside of their belief system is the devil or, or it's, it's really weird. <clears throat> and I, and I thought about that and I go, Oh my God, like Ezekiel is showing up. It's an ascended version of Ezekiel and photographs, Babaji, Mary, Kuan Yin, you know, all these, I mean, I'm getting calls from elders in China. They're going, going, well, what's Kuan Yin saying? You know, what is she saying? She's saying, clean up your act. You know, it's time to shift into service. You know, we need to get on with it. And uh, it's time to divert your energies and your finances and resources towards the awakening healing process. We can't wait anymore. But uh, uh, it's kind of interesting, but it was it, because we're so expanded and it's all going on that, People just can't handle it. They can't realize that the universe and God and, and there's more than one master and everything is just so vast. It's so much bigger mm -hmm. than the box that they have. And then they're threatened by the, you know, because people are, are threatened by, they fear the unknown and are threatened by it. But once you make it known, it's no longer a threat. Mm -hmm. and so it's just about educating people that, you know, this is happening. It's all around us and they're waiting. Yeah you know, waiting for us right. to rise to the occasion. Yeah. And we just need to get 10% of the population yeah. to, to raise up. And then that hundredth monkey effect, it'll automatically start going into, you know, the, the consciousness of everybody else on the planet. So we just need that 10% guys. It does, it does work that way. Uh, Cause Ezekiel told me, I was, I always feel like I haven't done enough and I need to do more, you know, and, you know, you always, you know, God, how can I help? I hope I, got and they said you went further than we ever thought you'd you know we didn't even think you'd survive <laughs> and, you know, all the stuff you went through but uh, uh nice. but yeah it was kind of interesting talking to him but they said you know you have no idea what's happening on the outskirts of your aura and and that's what people need to realize when if you can just hold a frequency and sit with it 
you don't have to say anything half the time. All you got to do is just sit there and you'll watch people just go into process and start releasing things and healing and things like that. But our, we're, we're communicating everything. Our DNA communicates, you know, it, it, it can communicate, it can communicate through dimensions and everything. There's a part of your DNA that's non-physical right? code, you know, so we're always communicating. We're always connected. And the whole dark hearts are do all they're doing is trying to not let us know that to keep us from realizing how things work and, and keep us divided. And that's what all the political division, you know, the, um, the, the monetary divisions going on, the gender divisions, the cultural divisions, all that stuff going on. That's all, that's all dark hearts doing that. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know if you if you leave people alone, they get along, they get along fine. Mm -hmm. Like governments go to war, and yeah. uh, you know, governments got to throw fear into the people so they can get all their money so they can go to war. But it doesn't go to the war; it goes back in their pockets. And that now we're finally figuring that one out. But uh, uh, it's a game that's being played. But you know, mm -hmm. most people just want to have their own connection with Creator. They want to have food for their family. They want a nice house. They want love and joy and bliss in their life that's the average person that's what they want mm -hmm. and we have to get back to that and just l stop letting people take it away from us and creating all these division games right yeah exactly there um yeah there's a lot of stuff going on in the the news and media and <laughs> yeah, i say, yeah. say pretty um ob oblivious to it yeah. now. it's kind of like i'm starting i'm having to become you know aware of um but I don't, I don't like to watch it and, and, you know, feed it. And, um, <laughs> my friend like, is like, Oh, should I, I don't know if I should wear this hat. They might think I'm this and that or, or whatever. And, and talking about how yeah. everybody in public is, it's like this or that. And I was like, wow, well, I'm like, I, I can't feel that. I think everybody's just like trying to, you know, they're just getting gas or going to the grocery store. It's just, it's the, the, the media, the news that's, you know, yeah, I, I saw a red hat here. It was like mega Hawaii or something, a red hat. And uh, I am so tempted to get one just to mess with people, you know, or get a hat. One side's red and one's blue. And if they get mad at you, just turn your head, you know, like, oh, you're OK. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's the same division game. But you know, what I see is that we, we need to get away from all this two-party system you know the best thing we could do on this planet would have a galactic council and then have grandmothers running the show that would that would be the best program we could get back to because you know grandmothers love their kids they love their gardens they love the earth and they don't send their kids to war and things like that unless they've been totally socially engineered but mm -hmm. uh, you know it's, it's that's what we have to get back to basically and back to universal law you know which is which is really simple. Like people go, what is universal law? Where's the book? And, and I go, it's universal peace, brother, sister, love, uh, individual freedom and prosperity for everybody. That's all it is. And, Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, you know, keep the basics, just stick to the basics and you'll get through all this. Right. Yeah. Just folks, I'll hold that love frequency, open your heart. Um, set strong, energetic boundaries is a big, exactly. yeah. <laughs> big thing. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a really big one. I learned that the hard way. So please set strong energetic boundaries. You guys. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of Palladians when they come here, they come here and they're all giddy. You know, the Palladian mm -hmm. souls that incarnate, they're all giddy and they're going. They're just love balls, you know, and they're they're just love and everybody and and they're in joy and they're bliss and they're happy, you know. And then they go, oh, nobody would harm me, nobody would steal from me, nobody would mm -hmm. lie to me because it's not part of the reality. And they have a hard time here on earth. They really have, but they are, they do hold a light and they're examples for others, but they really have a hard time dealing with earth. Mm -hmm. And and then a lot of the Orion Council of Light beings and the people that came in from, that went through the Orion Wars and everything. And that's another story too. People go, everything is negative from Orion. And I said, okay, we had the Orion Wars, right? And the wars were light against dark. And so, mm -hmm. There's light there too, right? There has to be, or there wouldn't be a war, you know. And uh, and so people don't realize that that there are beings that won the won the wars and and uh, they're they're restoring their their colonies and things like that, and they're coming to help the earth because they understand they know how this works. They're yeah. they're street savvy, 
you know, they're street savvy. And so a lot of times the, the people that incarnate from the Orion Council of Light and that group, and they went through the higher Orion uh, civilizations, they're, they, a lot of them help the Palladians. They go, they take them under their wing and go, okay, um, welcome to Earth. It's not the Pleiades anymore. And yeah. There's, and it's very dysfunctional planet and <laughs> make it personal, you know. But, uh, All right. Learn, learn not mine. Learn the words not mine. <laughs> Yeah. You know, boundary, not mine. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. I think I have a good mixture. I've got some street smart in there, <laughs> but also that happy, giggly, bubbly. Um, yeah. I think I got a good mix. <laughs> yeah. When you have the good mix, you can laugh at it. You can keep your bubbly humor and laugh at it all. And you go, seriously? You want to do that? <laughs> and go, exactly. And, so. and what it really pisses them off. That does them off even more, you know? Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Well, I guess we, we covered a lot. I would love to have you on again another time if you'd be interested sure. and share some of your um, footage and, in and stuff like that. There was a lot of people asking to see it um, earlier. You yeah. You can go to uh, East Eddy Stargate on YouTube and a mm -hmm. lot of it's there. A lot of it's on the website and we have a whole new producer and webmaster and and we're getting all that downloaded and, and, you know, a weird phenomenon comes with a lot of this energy is when you're filming stuff, all your hardware goes crazy. And, and I had my camera, I have a beautiful camera with night, night vision on it and it stopped recording and I had to get a new one and I got a new one, put it on there and it, it put everything on the camera and didn't put it on the chip. And so we had to figure out how to get it off the camera. And, and oh, so wow. there's, there's a lot of weird technology glitches that comes with the energy, but yeah. we have it all, all now and we're getting it all yeah. put together and then we'll get it out there. And then, and then also to go to Peter Slattery, like East Eddie, Australia. And he mm -hmm. has amazing footage too. Just, he has the, the best physical ship footage and beings I've, I've seen on the planet. So he's, wow. you should get him on your show. He, he'd be a good one. He, He's kind of, he's a little reclusive, but I'll put a good word in. I can get, I think I can get him to come on your show. I would love that. I, um, whatever I, in the, now I've been focusing more on the helping people make contact the, the DNA activations, but whenever yeah. I was just straight up CE five, I'm out there shooting every night. Um, yeah, people told me about Peter. I would love to meet him. And I saw one of his, uh, videos, somebody shared it in the telegram chat of a Pleiadian ship and it was just change in colors it was beautiful yeah. so yeah i would love to yeah we, we he's like my brother from another mother and and poor guy he's been getting hammered too with all the nonsense and you know i was there all this gossip stuff and i was there at the time i go this isn't real this didn't happen you know this didn't uh, mm -hmm. and i know the origins of it but but mm -hmm. uh you know he's a good man and he's uh um when we get together, the stuff that we see is just, it's crazy. It's like two universes coming together in the sky. But uh, yeah, he's, he's a, he's a good man and check out his work. He does some really good work. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I'll de I definitely will. Um, and is there anything like kind of upcoming that you would like to share with people or um, where people can find you? Yeah, we're, uh, we're just under the gun here to just, we're working at, he said he is not open yet. And so it'll probably go under another name. We're not even sure, but uh, we're in the process of getting that together. But we opened in May at the ranch in Washington, and that's where the real intense stuff, you've got the mountain and you've got the inner earth and all that stuff going on and treetop level ships and the energy is phenomenal there. But we'll, I'll be back there in May and we'll open up in May, probably have some big workshops in June. Mm -hmm. But, uh, oh yeah, the newsletter too. We have the newsletter coming out on a regular basis so you can sign up for the newsletter and that'll let you know what's coming up what's happening mm -hmm. uh the uh i'm trying to think of what else i think uh but yeah we have well it's on the it's on the website the mm -hmm. course is coming up and then we're still working on the conference we're trying to figure out if we want to do another big conference again and uh, we're running out of people to invite <laughs> you know like you would be one of them but i mean we're just kind of running out of people that aren't going to create a big uh drama program you know so well so, i am all peace and love over yeah. here <laughs> I've you and peter and a few others and just real solid people and, and to do to come and that's that's what i want to do i just 
I don't want to be in, in all this drama anymore. It's just, I'm so done with it. And I think most people are too, but mm -hmm. unfortunately the, the most, the people that are in control of the, the big UFO conferences and everything else, they are doing the controlled narrative. That's mm -hmm. why I'm not there. That's why you won't see me there anymore. But yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we just got to stick together, um, you know, and hang out with people who are also <laughs> just about peace and love. And then yeah. eventually, you know, things I think will kind of like level, level out, hopefully. But um, exactly. yeah. all peace and love here. No drama here. <laughs> right. Works for me. Awesome. I, I don't even know what that is anymore. I'm going, wow, I just, I, I do it in nature, but humans, it's rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I would joke. I go, ah, oh, silly human. <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And I forgot to mention this in the beginning. Um, if you guys are interested in trying CBD, you can get fifteen percent off through November um, from Hopewell Farm CBD oil. They have oil. They have topical creams. And there's a link for that in the description. My good friends, Hopewell Farms, a star seed couple. And, um, ooh, peace, love. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> and also, if you guys are interested in some merch, I have 11% off lilynovaspaceart.com. We have UFO hoodies, starseed hoodies, all of this. I've just been designing. I've been having so much fun designing a lot of cool stuff. Nice. Yeah, I'm, ha I'm having fun with it. It helps spread the word, you know, build that community. So it's cool. Um, and then this Sunday, we have a live activation at 2 p.m. Central Time. And I hope to see you guys there. And I guess that is about it. Thank wow. you so much, James, for coming on. It was so wonderful speaking with you. Oh, thank you. And yeah, go to eCity.org. All the information is there. And we'll have all the upcoming events there pretty soon. We're just, we're just waiting to see how things unfold. And yeah, we've got all the books I've written. Everything's there. So if you want to check that out, I'm really I'm I'm the world's worst marketer. I forget because <laughs> I, I don't even care about money. It just doesn't. It's like whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I'm super excited for for your conference. I I almost went um, last year. I didn't, but yeah, you've been visiting East City has been a bucket list. So um, yeah, I'm I'm excited about that. We'll get you out there. Why well, awesome. could you either do a workshop or a conference, one or the other? I would love to. Yeah, that would be awesome. All right, everybody, you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. Peace, love is like the that's the theme right now. <laughs> All right, bye, guys. Take care. All right.